Hey, Shalom family. There again, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, just wanted to be able to sit and talk with y'all. Uh, glad to be here there again. This is the Sabbath of the Lord. And, you know, just kind of this week here was mentioned that um, one of the things that came up or topic that it was, it was marriage that came up again this week. This week. So we want to talk about some things in marriage uh, pertaining to, you know, it's sometimes it's called 15 minutes with the captains. And so what they what we do is just put out something, not anything, but we put out something concerning a particular matter. It could be something like dietary law or Gentiles. And we'll speak on that matter for just a few minutes to help give our people edification and understanding. In this case, it's going to be marriage. I want to read something that we all can hopefully glean from. Um, I want to touch on this. Here at IURC, it's just an advisory that men and women alike, uh, as members, are to seek officials, official betrothal, uh, betrothal, only after a minimum of one year of IUIC membership. The term official just means after IUIC counsel that you receive from us, and it goes on that the counsel includes that both parties which seek to be married to each other, and sh uh, to each other produces medical records and each other to with, from each other to ensure that there are absolutely no STDs between them. Marriage following IUIC counsel would be honored by scriptural, weddings, feasts, customs. And we're gonna have some examples in the Bible as that part should go on. So um, we hear the IUIC acts about marriage a lot of times. And when we do that, we come to the place where brothers and sisters be with us for a while, just like we just read there. You've been with us for two or three years, you're coming up and you, you end up being a soldier. Now you are an officer and you, you, you labored in this gospel. And you find yourself that you want to be begotten of a sister or you want to have a wife or a real. And so the sister herself has applied herself. We've seen the worst that she put in. She's working with the children. She's been in the kitchen. She's laboring with the sisters and in, in coming together in um, Titus 2. She's putting those works in. So the brother looks and realizes that he wants to deal with his sister. Who's reading for me? I want somebody to get me, uh, get me Proverbs 18 and 22. Book of Proverbs, chapter 18, and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and, obtain, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Read, that from, read it again. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Because the man has came to the place where he realized that he don't want to be by himself. He wants to have a real or a wife in his life. So the Bible said that this man finding a wife, he found a good thing and obtained favor from God. So we see it right there that marriage is prominent in the will of the Most High. And what happens is a lot of times is that we come in and we want to make sure that everybody understands what a marriage or how it should be conducted in Israel united in Christ. So the thing of it is is that brothers and sisters come and as we read, they receive counsel from leadership. And in that leadership, they'll say, I want to, the brother said, hey, leadership, I want to deal with this sister. What do you think about this sister? The leadership signs out, say, the sister's been with us a while, this is a good report. And the, this, we ask the sister, hey, sister, you, this brother's inquired about you. The brother's right here is a good report. The brother's been with us for a while. And they agree to start proving one another. So in that, that, that time frame, they decide they want to approve each other out to see if there will be a marriage. So in the process of time, that brother and sister come to the conclusion that they do want to have a marriage. They come to leadership, they say, leadership, I'm going to marry this sister. So we counsel them again. And so what happens is that now they're going to give us a date. They say this date is going to be um, the 27th of, of such and such month. And so now we know that there's a date that's coming that's going to put them two together till Christ get back here. So now we're working as a body to help put on this ceremony as well as this feast. And we're doing it based on 
the fact that they are going to perform a marriage. So with that, give me um, 1 Timothy 5 and 14. Let's start there. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. Right. The sister came in. The sisters of a good report. She's been with us two or three years. She's been laboring with us here in the gospel. But the Bible says what? Read that from the top again. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. She's been with us a while. So she's young in this gospel. She's been with us and she's proven herself. And the brother looks across the, the, the congregation and he realized that he wants to prove her. So they've been proven for a while. Read on. Bear children. Uh-huh. Guide the house. So she has a role that she must produce and fulfill as a wife. Read on. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And don't give no reason for nobody to speak anything bad about the sister. So you can see that they come in here and we begin to commit serving the Most High and serving the most high people. And so when that happens, that we realize that we want to do the things that pertains to us as individuals, meaning in a marriage with somebody. Here's the point we want to make. Give me Titus 2 and 6. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 6. Uh-huh. Young men, likewise exhort to be sober-minded. It says, young men, you need to be likewise to be sober-minded. Go up to verse 3 and then read down again. Yes, sir. The aged women likewise, mm -hmm. that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, mm -hmm. not false accusers, right. not given to much wine, teachers of good things, mm -hmm. that they may teach the young women to be sober, mm -hmm. to love their husbands, mm -hmm. to love their children, mm -hmm. to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. That's the same thing that Timothy was talking about with the sister, that that's what she's supposed to be about. This is the wife we're talking about. This is the sister that says she want to get married. This is the sister that says she want the Lord to be Lord over her. Is that all of it? Good. Mm -hmm. Obedient to their own husbands. Read on. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Verse 6. Young men. Young men. Likewise. Same thing with you, young men. When you come into this truth, you've been in here for three, four years, or two years, you don't raise, you get raised up. Now you're also a teen. You've been laboring. You've been helping the leadership. You've been going out to camp year after year for a while. You're doing things in the body. You're helping with advertisement. You're doing things. Um, uh, you, you're helping uh, with the IT department. Read it from the top again. Young men, likewise, uh -huh. exhort to be sober-minded. Exhort to be sober-minded. Let's see what he's talking about. Read on. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Now he must show himself a pattern of good works. Let's see what these good works is that is talking about with this young man that came into the body. Let's see what it's talking about. Give me that in uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 1. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. This is a true saying. Mm -hmm. If a man desire the office of a bishop, mm -hmm. he desireth a good work. A bishop must then be blameless. So it says, uh, read it from the top again. This is a true saying. This is a true saying for the young man. Read on. If a man desire the office of a bishop. But he decides he wants to help lead his people. Read. He desireth a good work. There's nothing wrong with that. Read on. A bishop then must be blameless. But now he, he must, if he desires this good work, let's see what the good work that he is, is that is talking about. To say this young man must um, do, um, show for, for good works or pattern of good works. Read again. Did, this is a true saying of a man desire the office of a bishop, uh -huh. he desireth a good work. He desire a good work. Read on. A bishop then must be blameless. Now he must be blameless. So the brother's coming in, he's been laboring, he's been doing those things that we asked of him. The brother's putting in work, he's coming to camp 101, he's doing those things, he's going out to camp. The brother's been laboring, been helping other men get their houses in order. The brother's been blameless. Read on. The husband of one wife. Now he ends up that he wants to bring a wife into his life. Now he says, I want to get married. This is what the brother is saying. I want to be married now. This is a leader of Israel, of our people, that he must take on one wife. Read that part again. A, bush, a bishop then must be blameless. Uh -huh. The husband of one wife. A husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, 
of good behavior mm -hmm. given to hospitality at to teach. So this is an example of what they should do. They have proved one another. They came to a place where they end up marrying one another. But let's see what the marriage itself looked like. Let's see how they should perform it. They came to leadership. They sought counsel. They told the leadership that they want to fulfill the marriage. Let's see what it's talking about here. Let's get with me and go with me into the book of Tobit. Because we're, we're talking about performing a marriage. Chapter seven, give me 13. The book of Tobit, chapter seven, verse 13. Uh -huh. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. So this is where he's giving his daughter Sarah to Tobias to be wed. This is, this is what we often see in here in a traditional marriage. That when they come down to the point, point when they come out in front of the preacher and the, all the congress in the wedding sees them, when they stand there, they ask the man, who is it that gives this woman away? Let's read it in the Bible again. Read that again. Verse 13, mm -hmm. then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, mm -hmm. and he took her by the hand. So in a traditional marriage, what I would do is give one of my daughters away, I would take her hand, read on, and gave her to be, to be wife to Tobias. So you said, I'll give this woman away to be married to this man. So he gave his daughter away to Tobias, read on. Saying, behold, take her after the law of Moses. Pause right there. So the, the father said, I want you to do, the father was saying, marry her according to the law of Moses. Where in the Bible is the law of Moses found in? Let's get the answer. Give me that in Genesis 2 and 24, and also give it to me in Matthew 19 and 5, I believe. But let's go to Genesis first. So he said to, to, to uh, his daughter, he said, he, as he gave her away to Tobias, and he said, behold, take her after the law of Moses. This is how I want you to marry my daughter. This is the example that we have. Read that. Verse 24, Genesis 2, verse 24. Uh-huh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. That's what it was talking about in Timothy when it said that if a man desired to lead his people, that's what that was, that was talking about. If you desire to marry a sister, get your act together. Get yourself together that you may be able to deal with a sister. It's telling you that. It's telling you that in Timothy. It is telling you that in, in, uh, in this uh, verse right here. Read that from the top again. Therefore mm -hmm. shall a man leave his father and mother. Get your act together. Read on. And shall cleave unto his wife. Then you can get your sister and bring her to your house. Read. And they shall be one flesh. And then y'all going to be one flesh. Read on. That's it? Yes, sir. All right, now give me that in, uh, is it Matthew 19? I believe so. 19 to 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 5. Christ said this. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, uh -huh. and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Christ said the same thing. If you're going to deal with a woman, deal with it the same way, after the law of Moses. Let's see what the law of Moses looked like. Let's go back to Toby, and let's read 13 and read 14. And read 15 and stop at verse 16. Yes, sir. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to, to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them and called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. Then they began to eat. 16? 
Verse 16. After Reuel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. So here is the wedding ceremony. And there was also a wedding feast. So they had the wedding feast. They began to eat at the wedding. It's the same thing that we would do today. It's the same day many times you see at your traditional weddings where you see them come in and they bring the bride in, they wed, and then everybody uh, uh, exit to the stage left, and then they go to where they have the uh, ceremony, I mean, where the feast is being held for the wedding. It's the same thing here. It's the same thing. And this is how it should be produced. Drop down and give me the next chapter, give me verse 1. The book of Tobit, uh -huh. chapter 8, verse 1. And when they had sucked, they brought Tobias in unto her. So they had ate the, 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 uh, the meal uh, for the feast. And there was a ceremony in the chapter before that. But I want to jump down and show you verse 4 in this chapter. I want to touch on something. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And after that, they were both shut in together. What was they shut in at? They were shut in up in the chapter before that when they was in the wedding chamber. They done all those things that you should have in a wedding. Go back to verse 4 again. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And after that, they were both shut in together. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise and let us pray that God will have pity on us. Mm -hmm. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Because during this night, there was there were several men that tried to marry this sister. And every last one of those seven men that went into the chamber with this sister, all seven of those men died. And so the angel gave um, this young man some instructions on how to proceed through the night, in which he did make it through the night. That's why there was blessed in the name of the Lord that following morning. But what I want you to also see here is that this young, uh, this couple didn't um, come together until they actually had their paper signed, and they didn't come together until after the ceremony of the wedding was done. Then they came together. They don't, you don't come together before, after you get paper signed, you come together after the wedding feast. So if you want to know what a marriage is, a marriage is you have to complete the whole thing through. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.